Hello YouTube universe and welcome to Stein's Utopia. <laughs> Drummers often have to use an in-house drum kit when we're gigging at clubs or places like that. And those kits are rarely any good. Well, it's often not the kits, it's how they're maintained or tuned or whatever. So in this video, I will take a kit that's kind of crap and make it just good enough for me to do a gig. This is not an in-depth video on how to tweak your drums to sound best, but a quick way to just make them sound okay enough so that you don't have to spend two hours uh, tweaking the drums while all the rest of the band is eating pizza and having fun and you're stuck there with the crappy drums. This kit is kind of typical for what you can expect with the in-house drum kit. You see all the drums <laughs> a bit over muffled. Uh, and there's, well, this one has uh, this washer and a felt here. No clutch on the hi hat. Uh, <laughs> Look at that kick drum. The couple of pillows there. Probably a guitar player set this drum up. As you can see here, it's really bad for your cymbals. And of course, there are no cymbals on this kit. You can never expect to find cymbals on in house kits. Here is another cymbal stand without anything. Let's go around here. So drum pedal. Ooh, <laughs> it sounds really good. Uh, so now I'm gonna get this kicked, mic'd up, and we can hear what it sounds like. And to do that, we are not using any high-end mics or anything. We're using really cheap mic. We will use a 57 as an overhead mic. There's another one with the cable. And we use this, it's a, a kind of cheap uh, copy of uh, Beta 56. Well, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't work. That's cool, we're gonna use some gaffer. And for the kick drum, we have this. It's a 52 uh, replica, it's called, can you see what it's called? It's called Kick Me. <laughs> Kick me. So this uh, mic is about $75. This one is about $45. So it's re they are really cheap mics. So we will not be able to say that we save the sound with good mics. We're using really affordable mics here. Okay, so now let's hear how they sound. Okay, so there's no tone, uh, no nothing, actually. So, uh, there's no bottom end of the kick drum. There's no crack in the snare. Well, it's kind of. It's kind of crack, but... And the toms. The tone is over before the stick left the head. I'm guessing... This one hasn't been used in a while. Because these two match. Crappy sound, but a match anyway. Okay, so what can I do to save this drum set from the garbage can? So this is the batter head of the bass drum. Um, as you can see, there are two pillows inside. So then I'll just remove the head. Okay, 
Whoops. Brown is my favorite color. Have you seen plane trains and automobiles? Those aren't pillows! Well, these are pillows. And then we just put the head on again. I'm actually making sure that this worn out place where the pedal has been sitting is in the same place. Finger tight them or rubber tight them as I will say now. That's a cool new word, rubber tight knit. And I actually like the bass drum head this loose. So I'm not gonna tighten it some more, even though there are, I just tried to get rid of the wrinkles. Actually, I don't have to get rid of the wrinkles, but I look more professional if I do it on camera. Ah, I can't be bothered. So let's flip this thing around. I didn't tell you, this is a Premier Cabria drum. Except for the snare drum, they're all from this kit. Okay. <laughs> As you can see here, it's a pretty big sound hole. Uh, makes you wonder where to put the mic, right? Well, I wouldn't have cut this big hole. Maybe it's done that for transportation put another drum inside, I don't know. Um, but this is what we have, we'll try to make it work. We need to dampen the drum a bit. This is a bass drum. So I use the old tower trick. If there's a towel backstage, you can rub it. And then we make a triangle. <laughs> this was not very clean, actually. I hope it's not been used for anything indecent. Now I have this roll. It's a bit of duct tape. Gaffer, as we like to say it here in Norway. It's so it looks like French pastry, right? Cool. Breakfast croissant. It's always nice. So now I just tape the towel to the head and to the shell on the drum. With the trusty gaffer tape. And voila, we will see if it worked. So now you can see it's not very beautiful, but it works. Uh, <laughs> then we need to place the microphone. Uh, and I really have no idea <laughs> where to put the microphone here. Uh, if there's a sound technician uh, watching this video, Please comment in the comment section where to put the mic. I'm just gonna pretend that there's a sound hole right here, except I'm gonna push it a little bit more inside the drum. Um, uh, I'm just guessing here, but I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna hear how it sounds. Not too bad actually, I can work with that. Okay, so the first thing we do, we turn it over and see what we have to work with. This is a pretty cheap Sonar Force 1007. 
is not that bad actually. We'll see if we can save this. Okay. <laughs> As you can see here, this bottom head is really loose and they have muffled it. If you use tape on it, I hate tape on the bottom head. Nice sound. Go away and all these. So, on the snare drum, I like the head really tight. So, I take my two. Come on. Kidding. So the, the, I just loosen the head completely to all the tension rods are completely loose. And then, you know, uh, the old way was to finger tight them with these sonar drum keys. I think it's Gavin Harrison keys. Uh, you don't need that because you can just tighten until the rubber starts spinning. So now the head is fairly even. Uh, I would say tightened, but it's not tightened at all. It's pretty loose, but it's kind of even. So then just start turning a quarter turn everywhere. That was half a turn, I know. And I like the bottom head really tight. So I'm gonna actually tighten it some more. Well, it's kind of tight, so. Let's turn it around. So this head is muffled to death. Start by, I start by removing it. Away! <laughs> it's like wax in the drums. When was the last time you waxed your drums? Today. How many times have you waxed your drums? Well, a lot. It must have been the Brazilian times. Oh, I'm sorry. That was not particularly good. Uh, okay. So then I continue with loosen this head completely. As you can see here. This head is really worn out, but it's kind of okay condition anyway. So all these tension rods are now loose and then I finger tight them or rubber tight them as I will say now. As you can see it's, it's still, this is so stretched and it probably won't sound good in the low tuning. Maybe in the medium tuning, but I think we have to make this kind of pretty tight tuning on this one. Now I've tightened it quite a bit and you can still see that the mechanism is off <laughs> and it's still snare sound. Cool. So it will not work in a low tuning. Now we're in the 
medium, perhaps a medium high. I kept this on, I don't know why, I like it. There we go, medium. There's still some wrinkles in this, so we have to tighten a little bit more. So now it's fairly tight, let's hear. Okay. And I'm not doing... You have to be able to do this in like 20 minutes or something or the other guys will kill you. So the next thing I do, I put... <laughs> I loosen it really well now, so... Uh, I put the mechanism on, I keep tapping the drums while I'm tightening the snare. Here they come. And now the tone starts to uh, come back. I loosen it a little bit. So now it's medium high tension. And for the music I, pl I play, and we're going to play at the end of this video. I want to get rid of those overtones. Bit more dampened sound. Then we bring out the gaffer. Again. But we're not going to use as much as it had before. So I'm just starting here, just doing something in the corner here. You can hear a little bit overtones. Uh, so I'm gonna use a little bit more. Here we go. Ah, there it is. Sounds decent now. I can play with this. I actually just want to tighten it a little bit more. So let's hear what we have now. It sounds okay. Let's move on to the toms. So these are the rack toms, let's see, I can see it's missing one tension rod here and three on the bottom side, uh, that's complete, no, there's one missing here as well, um, that means that I will use just one of these. And I will steal some tension rods from this one and put it here. Okay, so I'm not going to use the 12 inch. I'm going to use 10 inch. <clears throat> so we start with the bottom head. As you can see, it's pretty worn out. We do the same as with the snare. We loosen all the tension rods. I like uh, the bottom head of the tom to be medium tight. 
So then I just turn this quarter turn each. Until I think I can feel the same amount of resistance on every tension rod. And again, as you can hear, they're not, not even... <laughs> I can't help myself. But I'm not going to do anything about that now, because this is a fast save. Okay, I actually like to tune the drums when they're on the bass drum. So we're going to mount it on the bass drum and then take it from there. So now I've tightened the bottom head. Already it sounds better, but same procedure as the other drums. Off with this. I'm going to save it, just in case I need it. And then again, I'm going to make the head really loose. All the way. So now, all the tension rods are completely loose. <laughs> and so is the tom. It's premier crap. Okay. Um, and here it's a little bit different. First, of course, rubber tightening it. And there are a lot of different preferences on how a tom should sound. So this is what I do. I just hit it and tighten it until I like the tone in it. Okay, as you can see, it's pretty worn out this tom as well. I like the tone, but it's way too much uh, high frequencies ringing out there. So, so I'm guessing that uh, most of them are in the bottom head. Okay. Then we have this little gaffer trick. I just take a small piece of gaffer and roll it around like this. The sticky part out. Then I just attach a little bit on the edge of the bottom drum head. As little as possible. Let's see. Okay, so there are some few overtones more I can probably get rid of if I do like this on the edge here. We can work with that. Now over to the floor tom. Okay, same procedure here. And this drum head needs to be waxed. These are really old, so the glue has completely dried up. So I won't even try. <laughs> this is fun. They actually have dampened the drum with 
paper and magic tape. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, okay. I can see here we are missing one tension rod. So we're stealing one from the 12 inch. And same procedure. We loosen all the tension rods. And then rubber tightening them. You really need to buy one of these so you can, uh, you can start using the term rubber tightening. And that feels okay already to me. I'm not gonna here either. So you're gonna keep it this loose. So on this side of the drum, there's a lot of interesting things going on. <laughs> there's one screw missing here as well. Okay. And then I loosen all the tension rods. And then, uh, let's see. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> It looks like an old handkerchief or something. I hope there's n this is not snot. Uh, probably an old tablecloth or something. This one, we never ever gonna use this one. Thank God for Fast forward. So now it's rubber tightened again. And we do the same as, is it? No, it's not. Now it's rubber tightened. So we do the same as with the rack tom. Well, it's good enough. Uh, the sound engineer can work with this. Need to dampen it just a little bit because it's ringing a lot. Let's see how that works. As I showed you earlier, this hi hat stand has no clutch. So if you're going out of town to play in an in-house kit you don't know, just take the clutch from your Hyatt stand, put it in your stick bag, just in case you need it. Fixed it. Just don't forget to bring it home again. So as I showed you earlier, this one has nothing on it. So what I do, if I do not know what I'm going to get, I take one of my own cymbal stands uh, before I leave from home. And this one will fit every stand, so I just remove the whole top and put it in my stick bag. And there, it works. So let's do it to all the stands. So here it is guys, I've put some mics on, as you can see, the cheap mics with a 57 on the hi-hat and a 57 overhead and here it is, the uh, kick me microphone, that's, that's really good. So there you have it. The drum set is completely mic'd, I put my own cymbals on there and I'm ready to take it for a test drive. But I'm not gonna try it alone, I brought a couple of friends with me, say hello guys! Hi! Hi! Hi. They're idiots, but they're really cheap. We're gonna play a song and I'm gonna try to do a mix on this one. I am by no means a sound technician, but I'm gonna do my best. And if I can make it sound pretty decent, so can you. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
and picked up a few tricks. Uh, please let me know in the comment section if you learned something. Uh, and if you don't like it, please be nice. And please subscribe to my channel, that would be really nice of you. So, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!